joining us today in this first live session for the course on global value chain analyzing for the BIMSTEC regions. I am Natnisha Court Assistant. So before we start, I would like to introduce Rupa Chanda, Director of Trade, Investment and Innovation Division at SCAP, and Michal Pitikala, Lead Economist from USA, to give us an opening remark. So Mrs. Rupa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. A very good morning to all of you from Bangkok and from SCAP. Welcome to this course on value chain analysis for the BIMSTEC region. As mentioned, I'm Rupa Chanda, Director of the Trade, Investment and Innovation Division at ESCAP. ESCAP, as you know, is the regional branch of the UN Secretariat for Asia and the Pacific. We have a long-standing program on trade, investment and innovation policies. Just to provide a little bit of context as to why this course is so important. We're all aware of the importance of international trade as a key means of implementing the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030, which was adopted by all UN member states. During crises, trade has provided a lifeline for many member states to actually start recovering from the crisis and also to mitigate the impact of the crisis, particularly in terms of enabling access to essentials as well as other commodities that either could not be provided domestically or inadequate quantities. Recent crises have clearly highlighted the importance of having well-functioning trade and supply chains. Obviously, the system is far from perfect and there's much scope to develop better trade policies to make trade more efficient, more inclusive and more sustainable. This can be done in part through research and analysis, which is really the purpose of this workshop. It's one among many training workshops we've organized on trade policy research analysis at ESCAP. This workshop aims at building capacity for evidence-based trade policy making, and we're very pleased to organize this workshop in close collaboration with USAID and BIMSTEC. I'd like to thank both organizations for their collaboration in this event. I also take the opportunity to welcome Dr. Bishwajit Nag from IIFT, the course facilitator for this course. While this workshop will be conducted virtually, which does come with its challenges and limitations, our takeaway after three years of conducting many such virtual events is that there are also benefits. In particular, we are able to bridge physical distance and are thus able to bring many more participants who otherwise would not be able to attend the physical workshops we generally organize. We're also able to deepen interagency collaboration which is often constrained under a physical format. I really think this workshop is a great example of collaborative partnerships that can work well virtually. We saw that more than 200 participants have registered for this course. I believe you'll have a very good learning experience interacting with the course facilitator and guest speakers who will be joining various live sessions in this course. And this will be done through self-learning based on the materials that we've provided and through discussions with your peers in this training course. I wish you all a very successful workshop. Let me now hand over the floor to Mr. Nihal Pitigala from USAID, our partner organization in this training course for his remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rupa. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, most of you who are participating in this course now are familiar with me, so no need to elaborate. As Rupa mentioned that this is a collaborative effort initiative from, from the perspective of a USAID. It's a 12 month long training and capacity building program. Some of you have engaged. Um, USAID is obviously delighted to have you and SCAP expertise on this topic of value chains. As you know, that South Asia region and larger BIMSTEC region operates in the margin of periphery, periphery uh, margins of periphery in the global value chain. Uh, this topic comes at a time where there are significant developments taking place. Uh, we have started to witness a systemic or systematic change, I should say, emerging from several developments, not least the COVID-19, which caused a, a deep collapse in the aggregate demand and a simultaneous supply chain uh, you know, collapse. And these shocks now has catapulted um, the risks has catapulted due to the Russia-Ukraine tensions, and uh, it has come to the you know, surface of the policy agendas lately, and, and it, it has become quite significant. So it's highly appropriate 
uh, to be exposed to this training, just to let you know that there are several analytical approaches one could look at. Uh, for example, micro level firm surveys, refined broad economic classification based on trade statistics. And then you have now the Riva database that you learn based on input out based analytical approach. Each of these have uh, merits and demerits. Uh, but I urge you to make use of this excellent opportunity to understand the methodologies and the application of value chains and you ensure you complete the program, sustain it, literally speaking. Uh, I look forward to seeing you at the end of the program. Thank you, Rupa and Bisujit uh, and the team and good luck everybody. Back to you. Thank you. So in these next sections, I will uh, introduce Biswa Jigna a professor of economics from Indian Institute of Foreign Trade, IIFT. So he will give us an overview of this course and Biswajik is specializing in global value chain, trade and technologies and implication on trade and sustainable development goals. And currently Biswajik is advisor of global value chain at Asia Pacific Research and Training Network Artnet an advisory board member of UNS CAP e-learning course on trade and SDG. And before I give the floor to Biswajik, so I would like to add, if you have any questions uh, or participants uh, should add your name and your country, and then we will call your questions. So Biswajik, so now the floor is yours. Good morning, good evening. So am I audible? Okay, great. Uh, so Utada, could you please give me the presentation right? So uh, give me the presentation right. Uh, do you want us to open your PowerPoint, right? Right. Okay. This was it. You can also share your screen. You you have the right to to share screen already. Is it now visible? Um, no, it is not coming. Now? Yes. Yeah. There's a bit of echo actually happening. I do not know. You are using multiple devices. That is why. Oh, multiple pages. Oh, it's good now. It's good now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. OK, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank. Um, UNSCAP and USA to give me this opportunity. Uh, special thanks to Rupa, Nepal and Dada uh, for arranging this entire show in a size. As you know that uh, Bimstek region is basically a bridge between South Asia and East Asia. And the global trade has changed from uh, one side of final goods going from one country to another country to back and forth. Different types of uh, global value chains right now pretty much in place. Uh, Global value was disturbed a bit because of supply chain disruptions in the mid of last uh, you know, decade, as well as um, due to pandemic. <clears throat> so this particular course is trying to highlight uh, not only the te technical aspects of global value chain, but also provides a lot of incentives for the policymakers that how actually you can make 
the trade policy more uh, more uh, friendly towards the global region. So at the outset, uh, the objective of the course is basically looking into the major aspects of trade in value uh, I'll just mention different approaches. We will highlight that. Um, then we will focus on calculation of some of the GVC indicators and the policy indicators. So it's basically an attempt to build up practical skill using various tools and also brief participants about the ongoing researches in this particular area. More precisely, um, the entire course is divided into number of features, which focusing initial part is focusing on different kinds of uh, definitional aspects, concepts, and how this literature is developed. A participant must know this thing. This is a new literature, it's mostly coming up after 2000. Though trade parts and components were there in trade theory quite some time back, actually, but this was mostly a kind of outsourcing raw materials, parts and components from developed world and developing the final things from in the developed world. But the global value chain and more uh, the newer definitions called international production network actually brings up many other issues. Number one, it provides opportunity of upgrading the product process so that means there is possibility of innovation. Second, um, there is a possibility of, um, of redesigning the global value chain within the developing countries, and especially the SME can reconnect things doing a new kind of innovations in the value chain. So the literature actually involves this aspect. So both theoretical, empirical, data oriented, SWS, so a whole lot of uh, approaches are actually become very common. So we focus mostly on the analytical approaches and uh, our main agenda at the beginning will be basically to identify challenges um, of gross trade basis analysis. So there could be a substantial overestimation of the export and imports if we basically focus on the gross value of export and imports. And the value added trade actually can help us to take out this double counting or overestimation. And to do that, we need to understand a bit of put out table and tricks and table, which we are be focusing in the second module. And then we'll go into some indices like GC participation, GC position, forward, backward. And then we'll highlight the new developed uh, package which focuses on visualization with respect to, uh, to global chain and developed by UN, SCAP, TB, and, and in the I think Latin American partners as well. So this is Eva. Uh, so this initiative we will highlight uh, in one of the lectures how actually the policies can derive out of it will be also um, highlighted. And lastly, um, we'll focus that in post-COVID world, how the dynamics of global chain change and what kind of new orientations we require. So this particular set of lectures are actually focusing from the basic concepts, the technical concepts, use of IT tools, um, websites, and then leading to some policy discussion. So the uh -huh. Uh, so in the pedagogy, actually, um, we have pre-recorded lectures which participants will get it. And uh, each lecture is roughly an hour long. Um, 
and a lot of examples are given and some concepts are also explained. Uh, end of every recorded lecture, there will be multiple choice questions, some descriptive type questions and analysis using data and indicators available in Riva. And then there will be one more session uh, in which we'll have group discussions and uh, and some clarifications, so, which is basically a kind of a doubt clearance session. So there will be four uh, major sessions here. So in the lecture one, um, it is basically the concepts and definition, different approaches to analyze the value chain, and how actually uh, there are several attempts actually made in the past to capture the evaluated and how the literature is um, getting stabilized because as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a new area, plenty of research going on, large number of research institutes around the world are involved. So there are a lot of discussions, so different approaches have been converging and uh, something like a multi-regional and input-output table based approaches are increasingly becoming very important. So in the lecture two, um, we'll focus on the trade in value added. And as I just mentioned a few minutes back that under the gross uh, value of the trade, there is a possibility of overestimation. And that's why the trade in value added actually is becoming very important. So in this lecture, um, we will take examples of input output tables, especially in a two by two matrix that two countries are actually having two products and how the input output table can help us to track the value addition and then we'll uh, try to generalize it. And generalizing means here actually you require a computer programs to calculate uh, the trading value added. Um, so in this case, our main idea will be basically to identify different concepts like domestic value added, foreign value added, indirect value added, uh, and through this we'll be able to separate the double counting because every time when the parts and components are getting added some values and then crossing the border, then that's it being double counted in every time it is being exported further. And then we'll focus on GBC participation and positions to understand the dynamics. And that basically helps us that whether a country is moving towards in the forward direction or, or basically going backward. Uh, third lecture will be focusing on, on Riva. Uh, its coverage and usage. And there are different uh, aspects of Riva, basically to focus on GVC relationship as a whole, structure of value added, mm -hmm. participation pieces, and backward and forward. And the last lecture, which is basically kind of a uh, thought provoking, uh, because based on all these numbers, how policymakers or the researchers can actually come to a conclusion. So uh, this needs to be seen uh, from several perspectives. Number one, uh, the world has moved towards more fragmented trading systems. So in the fragmented trading system, how the optimal policy can be developed. And then uh, in light of the rising protectionism uh, and actually how actually we can actually help this particular thing to move. And, and several countries are, are having uh, serious challenges in terms of data. Uh, so that's basically one lim major limitation in this particular, um, particular model. This model also overlooks um, trade facilitation related trade barrier. So that also needs to be discussed in this context. One interesting thing here in the recent uh, developments, all the input output models and all, uh, uh, all the websites which focuses on trading evaluated, they have started bringing the service sectors because 
what is happening more certification of manufacturing process and more than trading goods now trading tasks are happening so everywhere you require some services to get added uh, for example um, I, I i have found out in my own research that in, in india's automobile exports um, the contribution of uk is mostly in financial services that means indian automobile companies are borrowing externally from the London financial markets, and that is basically helping India to develop new cars and export. So um, financial services, IT services, um, transport services, um, r and related services. OK, so these services play a very important role, and actually we can uh, track these things. Maybe in percentage term at this moment in BIMSTEC region, it may be very small, but this can provide an opportunity to, for getting a better linkages for improving the productivity. Um, as I mentioned um, that just like a normal uh, or unlike normal supply chain, global value chain actually focuses more on values. So there is a possibility of uh, different kinds of upgrading because independently SMEs in developing countries can start doing some innovation. Um, even they are linked to a particular OEM they can start doing this innovation if they get a little bit of flexibility. So it may be a process functional upgrading or maybe an interchain upgrading. Uh, so upgrading could be in developing design, could be developing different products uh, altogether. For example, um, a company may be developing laptop screen. They might shift to making a uh, developing uh, screen for smartphones. OK, so this is basically changing in this this particular area and a little bit of innovations are required, even though fundamentally they are same. So uh, this so this basically is providing us the need for convergence of different policies with trade policy. One of them is basically innovation policy. Other could be investment policies and industrial policies and how the new age trade agreements can actually bring all of them together. And finally, the rise of digital platform, how actually it is helping this uh, global value chain to uh, flourish uh, in leaps and bounds. So after um, the participants actually attending the course, um, end of every course, there will be uh, some multiple choice questions, some descriptive questions. So uh, to get the certificates, actually participants have to uh, get a 65% um, or more in each module. Uh, and finally, they need to do the evaluation of the, of the course. So uh, certificate actually depends on this particular uh, condition, uh, which every participant must keep it in mind. Lastly, uh, what you are going to take away out of this particular course? Um, as mentioned, um, GVC has completely changed the trade structure of 21st century. Okay, and and countries need to understand these things and bring them into their trade policy. Second, the role of SMEs, as I just mentioned, um, and their linkages with the lead players require deep understanding because one literature is there about the governance of global value chain. So whether it will be a hierarchical governance, whether it will be a completely a market driven, uh, driven uh, global value chain. What I want to mean here, whether OEMs would like to invest in the SMEs to develop new technology or OEMs will just buy the product from SMEs uh, without having any kind of a uh, collaborations, which is just a market relation. So what will be the best way to move forward? And again, uh, whether the technology will be transferred or not, whether SMEs will be able to develop, um, uh, develop technology and change the process depends on the skill of, uh, of the labor force in that particular country. So even education actually uh, plays a very important role here. So technical education, skill development, trade and industrial policies, innovation, transport policies, all these things are coming together. Actually, 
GVC is trying to bring all of them together and provide a new direction that the way the policy should move. Uh, researchers can identify readily available data sources and analytical tools to assess the status of global value chain in different sectors. Um, here in, among the BIMSTEC uh, countries, there are possibly um, some value chains are already there. Maybe they are latent, but they can be actually you know, uh, developed in much more refined way. For example, uh, the textile value chain is already there. Um, everybody knows it. Okay, there could be uh, could be a new kind of a uh, value chain maybe developed, maybe in the area of say furnitures, maybe in the area of say uh, semiconductor, maybe in the area of auto components, plastic products, petrochemical products, a lot of such uh, sectors may be studied depending on the interest of the uh, of the of the participants. So um, both at the macro level and at the micro level, uh, issues are important because farms need to understand how the policies are being made and government needs to understand how farms are likely to participate in the new policies. So both sides back and forth informations are very important um, and especially in the post COVID world to reduce the uncertainty. These discussions are very, very important. So policymakers from the BIMSTEC region as well as the researchers can identify the emerging value chain in the region and how countries outside the region uh, can also be linked to SMEs in the region. So what I'm trying to say that in this database, you will find uh, the countries uh, from different parts of the world. So the value chain may not be li limited to, to the region itself. So what I'm trying to say, it's not just the regional value chain, it could be outside region also, some countries may be connected. So, uh, so the policies uh, should be within the region and policy should be also for external linkages. So all those discussions are there in the pre-recorded lectures and we'll have a discussion session at the end uh, when, it, when participants will complete their learning. And, and we are looking forward to that discussions and it should be a learning for both of us, both for the participants because many of them are having special knowledge, a specific knowledge. From there, actually, you also get to know how to make these lectures more, uh, more, more appropriate, more useful. Um, and that's all from my side now. Thank you, Bismarck, for the introduction to the course. So as he mentioned, this course will consist of several learning modules, and all modules will be available on the SCAP community platform. So uh, let me take this opportunity to show you the SCAP community platform. So can you see my screen? Yes. OK, thanks. So after you register to this course on analyzing value chain and trade flow, then you will see this screen. Uh, all five modules are accessible here and as well as the evalu evaluations as well. So let me walk you to the first video module as an example. So the first module on understanding global value chains and trade in value added. So you will see the video lectures that you will have to study here. And the video presentations and the video narrations are also available. You will click here and then you will see the uh, presentations of the video clips that you will have to learn here. Also, the video narration is also available. So then after you have watched the video lectures and review your lesson, you can take the quiz by click here. You will see uh, the hyperlink here to uh, take the quiz. You will need to fill in this form. Uh, so fill in your title, your name, email address, countries and organizations. But please be careful when you fill, fill in your name. It should be correct because this name will appear on your certificate that you will receive 
also your email address as well. So let me move next. After you fill in everything here, you will be accessed to the uh, multiple choice quiz. So all choice are, are available here and you will need to answer all choice. And to pass the quiz, you need to get 65% uh, correct. Um, and as Ms. Majik mentioned, so uh, we have five modules in total and each module have a quiz. So you need to pass uh, all quiz by getting 65% or more correct answer, then you will get a certificate from the United Nations SCAP. Also doing the evaluation at this, the last section here. So it will take you just uh, 10 to 15 minutes to complete this survey. And if you have any like suggestions or your comment, you can let us know by filling in this form. Um, and I think uh, now all of you have some idea about the SCAP e-community platform. So let me uh, mention you the last thing before we turn back. Uh, in this platform, we also have a chat box. So here at the top. So all, all of the participants are very welcome to write anything about the course here, like introduce yourself or add any questions you have, sharing your experience. And lastly, if you encounter any like technical issues or have any questions about the course, so please feel free to contact us anytime. And without further ado, I will move to the last, the, the next sections. Uh, we will watch the introductions of the Riva, an, an, Liva, Liva value analysis, Liva uh, value chain analysis together. Hi, welcome to Reva Value Chain Analyzer. Have you ever wanted to know how much do your country's exports need imports? How much do your countries contribute to others' exports? In which sectors? And with which countries? Answers to these questions are a prerequisite if you are going to understand how your country is connected with others in the world today. It was time consuming to find answers to all these basic but important questions. But, with Reva, it will be just few clicks if you enter into Reva and go to the GVC Relationships section. Just choose Economy and Year of Interest. For example, I put Cambodia, and 2017. In less than three clicks, you can see backward compared to forward linkages. 
For Cambodia, GVC participation is much more on backward linkages than forward linkages. The characteristic that tend to show Cambodia generally situates at the relatively downstream part of the value chain. If you scroll down, you will see the top five GVC sectors of Cambodia. On the backward side, the country's imports are used in the textiles value chains. On the forward side, its intermediate exports are significantly go to agricultural value chains. You can click into any of these sectors to see who are the major partners for that sector. The largest input supplier for Cambodia's textile exports is China. The largest export partner for its agricultural intermediates is Vietnam. If you go further down, you see the top five GVC partners. You can click into any of them to see what are they trading with Cambodia. For example, Germany is quite a significant partner on forward linkages. You may be curious about what is Cambodia contributing to the GVC exports in Germany. So, you just click at Germany. You see the major contribution of Cambodia to Germany exports is predominantly about hotel and restaurant. And these information hints you abhor their relationship in the value chains of tourism services. You may want to know more about the GVC relationships. Let's drill down. Reva has four more sections for you to get deeper into value chain linkages. Here, the section on structure of value added tells about what are inside the country's exports. Let's look at what are inside Cambodia's total exports. Choose Cambodia as the exporter, world is importer, and all sectors combined. Foreign value added, in green, contributes about one-fourth of total exports. The rest is generally about domestic value added. The largest part of Cambodia's exports is the dark blue. It is final assembly stage of export production that happens in the country. Light blue and red are exports of intermediate products. The red is used in further stage of GVC's export production. If we scroll down, we see cross-Southeast Asian comparison. You could notice that Cambodia has relatively larger the green and dark blue than other Southeast Asian countries. It tells you that Cambodia's exports have high import content, and the country is more into exporting final product than intermediate product. In other words, GVC participation of Cambodia remains limit at the downstream end of the value chain. This conclusion is further emphasized in the section on participation in GVCs, where we can compare across subregion. I click into the section on participation in GVCs. I keep Cambodia as exporter, year 2017. Because I want to see its total exports, I choose world as importer, and all sectors. It shows Cambodia together with Brunei, Laos, and Indonesia, remain less presenting in GVCs than other ASEAN. The major difference between Cambodia and the other three is the components inside their GVC participation. For Cambodia, foreign value added, the green one, is the major element, because the country is at the downstream end of value chains. In the other three, their GVC participation is mostly about exporting primary intermediates, which then has less to do with foreign value added. In contrast, Vietnam and other large ASEAN countries integrate more into GVCs. They add domestic value into imported intermediate and export to GVC partners. These value added exports may come back and forth to the country at different stages of production. Though GVC participation consists significant but balanced between foreign value added, in green, domestic value added, in red, and double counting, in purple, which reflects the repeated border crossing of those value added. We can dig into backward linkages and forward linkages of a country. The two sections have a similar architecture. For the sake of time, I will focus on the first one and be very brief on the second one. If you still remember, we were seeing Cambodia has extensive backward linkages, especially in the textiles sector. Now, I want to dig deeper. I choose Cambodia as exporter, 
world is importer, 2017, and export sector is textiles. The first chart shows the sources of inputs for Cambodia to produce textile exports. The blue part represents inputs sourced from Asia-Pacific partners. It accounts more than 80% of all imported inputs that Cambodia used in textiles production. China, Vietnam, Thailand are the three largest partners supplying inputs to textiles export production in Cambodia. Sometime, I may want to see the linkages with a small partner more closely. For example, if I want to find more about supply chain relationship with Latin America, which is in green, can simply remove other regions like this. Now, backward linkages with Latin America appear in full screen. I can see that Brazil, Mexico, Argentina are the Latin American countries that I should focus on. If I want to do a cross-country comparison, I scroll down. I see how the share and sources of import inputs of textiles differ across ASEAN countries. Cambodia followed Singapore, Indonesia, and Vietnam in terms of the share of import content. An interesting part is now I see that textiles production in Cambodia heavily relied on intra-Asia Pacific inputs. This information may trigger my interest to explore into a specific partner. I then go up and select by source economy and put the source economy that I want to explore, such as China. Now, I see more about where inputs from China go to. More than 80% of inputs from China went into manufacturing low-tech sector, textile sector in particular. I scroll down to see cross ASEAN comparison. Among ASEAN countries, Cambodia and Vietnam are the most heavily dependent on inputs from China, but Vietnam is connected with China in a higher tech manufacturing segment than Cambodia. I want to see what are inside this China-Vietnam links in manufacturing high to medium tech. I click the dark red. What appears tell me that the links are about inputs from China that go into computer electronics and electrical machinery sectors of Vietnam. Let's find out more about China's integration with other economies in the forward linkages section. I choose China as exporting economy. 2017 and all sectors. It shows, China's exports its domestic value added to export sectors of Republic of Korea more than any other. Korea absorbs nearly 7% of China's intermediate for further exports. The share is significantly higher than the second largest partner, which is Germany. Scrolling down, a cross-country comparison shows China is connected to value chains of others to all regions and its regional partners are well diversified. The most opposite within the subregion is Mongolia, of which intermediate exports are very concentrated within Asia-Pacific. You may want to know which economies are behind the heavy Asia-Pacific integration of Mongolia. Let's click and see. Most of Mongolia trade in Asia-Pacific is with China, followed by Russian Federation and Republic of Korea. To see which sectors that your economy's exports are used by value chains in a partner of your interest. You just need to go up and select by importing economy. Reva will give you sectoral components of your value added that have been included in exports by the partner of your interest and a cross-country comparison within the same subregion. Also, Reva is flexible to support any type of users. We know a great challenge of people working with policymakers is the time sensitivity. So, we have country briefs for you. Just choose an economy of your interest and year, like this. I choose, Bangladesh, 2017. Reva will generate the country brief in a format that is ready to use. If you are a researcher you may need more flexibility to use the data for further research. You can download the data through this flexible data querying option after you created your account in Reva. For example, you might want to see value chain linkages of your economy with a group that might be your potential FTA partners. This definitely possible by creating your economy group of interest here. After you select indicator, economies and year of interest, Reva will generate the data set of your selection and give them as a CSV file to use in your further analysis. 
Reva technical note and introductory note are also available for you to understand more how to use the Reva value chain analyzer. We hope you will find our Reva value chain analyzer helpful when you want to know about your economy in GVCs. Finally, we are thankful to all partners involved in Reva value chain analyzer, in particular, supports from FILAC, ECLAC, and ADB. Thank you from SCAP. Um, so welcome everyone to the last section here. So we will have our next meeting on the 2nd of December. So hope to see all of you are there and more people to come. Uh, in that section, we will have the Q&A sections to discuss about the course. If you have any questions and uh, after this course, so the participant, you will have to go through the um, the the course lectures that I have shown you on SCAP community platform. And please send us your uh, assignment before the live section too. So I hope you all have uh, a good day today. Um, so sh should we close this meeting now? Uh, everyone have anything to add? Thank you and uh, thank you uh lachina and we will be meeting again in person physically on 2nd december in between we will be looking at working directed by you biswajit witada uh, we'll go through course materials the scap community system and then we'll come back on 2nd december right yes yep. Thank you. OK, so thank you. Bye bye, thank you. everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Our presentation will be uploaded after this meeting. Bye bye. And the bye. 2nd December link, will it be different link or you will be sending? We'll be using um, the we same already link. send the different link to your email. All right. Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, I, I saw uh, Chujat put his name in the chat. Uh, I would like to check whether he, he has any question. Jujat Ahmed, do you have any questions? Yes, I have a question to Dr. Dipwadi. OK, go ahead, please. First of all, very warm uh, regards to Ministry of Old Friends, Dr. Vakar Ahmed from Pakistan, uh, Sustainable Development Policy Institute. Uh, I'm working with him on trade and value generated subjects. So one thing which I didn't saw in your content, whether we will be looking for any B2B integration or B2C integration, which is another core part of the value chain. Will we also be looking into that aspect? Right. See, this, this is completely based on input output model and uh, and trade data. So you can consider this is basically a B2B. Uh, B2C is difficult because we really do not have any consumption data or the data with the retail uh, buyers. OK, so that may be in future some items may be retained, done, but at this moment it is mostly the B2B. Is it all right? Yes. Can you hear me? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question? I I see in the chat that uh, there is a problem of access the course content. Um, probably Nanisha, please show how to access a community platform from the very beginning, from where they have to register to the community platform, please. OK, sure. Um, let me show my screen. Uh, 
Um, can you see my screen? So now I'm sharing it. It's yet coming. I guess uh, it will come soon. Uh, is it coming now or not? Still dark on my end. Okay, uh, yes. is it work? Okay. Yes, now, now I can see. Okay, so when you click at the first step, you will see this page. So then you need to uh, request to join here. And then sign in your uh, ad, fill in your first name, your last name, email address, and your password. If you have sign in, uh, already have an account, but if you are not, uh, do not have any account before, then you need to sign in by filling in your uh, create account here. And then you will receive an email back uh, up. And then you will receive an email from SCAP community platform. And then you need to verify there. And then you will be able to access to the course. But if you still have any problem about this, so then you need to email to us and then we will help you on this. So I hope this will uh, can help you on the uh, on this issue. So uh, in short, after create account, there will be auto generate email sent to a participant inbox to verify the account. They need to click link to verify it. Uh, if you if you don't receive email, you may have to check at the junk mail box or spam box because it's my uh, falling in there. Uh, once you verify the account, your account will be generated automatically, uh, and then you use your username and password to to access any course uh, opened on on the the platform. Is that correct, Nadisha? Yes, correct. Thank you very really much.